Well, it's Margaret again, back uh, to show you the uh, Melcourt um, growing media that uh, arrived this afternoon. And uh, so I was able to pot up the Phragmatipediums that Ed of Ed's orchids had sent me. This is lovely. This is a huge, big um, bark. And, of course, small pieces in it as well, but um, it's lovely. Look at that. And... Uh, so the frags have been uh, potted up in a uh, mixture of that bark and also orchiata bark. Now the orchiata bark is only medium grade and I've also introduced some um, hydrogen um, growing balls um, just to uh, give a little bit more aeration. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, that Orchiata bark there is a 40 litre bag. This one is a 70 litre bag. And uh, Keith got me two, because of course we're stocking up now and, you know, like I'm boring your edgy by saying I'm going to be retiring, so Keith's getting a stock of things that we might need. And uh, so those two there, Cost the same price as that one bag there. So it just goes to show. Well, we've got diminishing light outside, so I've just pulled the blind to. And uh, the wind's been getting up today, heralding the arrival of that uh, next cold spell we're going to have. But this is uh, Phragmopedium Garum Weaver. Not a as big the leaf structure as the other Phragmopediums. But it's a very nice slim leafed Phragmopedium. I must add, I have to say, Ed has some lovely frags. He really has such sturdy specimens and I, I do feel very blessed that I'm able to uh, contact Ed and he sent me these lovely Phragmopediums. And this is Phragmopedium and in fire. And there and there that was uh, a flower. But um, of course it's finished now and I've got new growth appearing there and uh, so this is of course a flowering specimen and uh, whether the light will let me go down because I'm only on my tablet at the moment but this is a lovely large specimen and uh, I'm so grateful to Ed of Ed's Orchids because, like I've explained before, when you find somebody who grows such excellent orchids, you know, you don't want to um, take a chance with other growers. And Ed's Orchids are to the... Well, I, I've never known orchids to come to such high standard. Oops, bear with me a minute. Right. So they're on the top shelf now, and uh, with the other ones, I've left that little fan off at the moment because I'm, I'm of course videoing, so I don't want the noise to interrupt us. And there's Andy and Fire, absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really chuffed with today. Um, I've managed to clear this room. Clean all the shelving, made myself a lot more room, and uh, I'm not saying that every orchid I've got in place at the moment will actually stay there, but I'm hoping uh, I won't have to really move them about much. Just depends uh, when we get the heat of the summer coming whether I might just need to manoeuvre them round a little bit. And uh, 
I've not been able to, uh, well I've, not, I've been too busy to tell you the truth, um, to water the mounts today. But uh, I don't think they're going to come to any harm. And uh, there's the other Phragmopediums. They're wanting to be watered now, so um, that one's grown. Look at the size of that one. And that's the one at the back there from Madeira. I'm just in the shadow now. So, uh, some rescue ones on the bottom there. And some uh, rescue phalaenopsis as well. I'll just pan round. It's always nice when you've cleaned and tidied your room. And then uh, you've placed all your orchids back. I'm exhausted. Keith wonders uh, when he's going to get something to eat, poor chappy. But uh, I'll be downstairs soon and I should be making tea. And of course when we pan up there, which I showed you earlier, that's the big bud developing there. And this little Chantilly pink, it looks purple now, doesn't it? But it isn't, it's pink. And we've been round all these already today, so I'll just finish on this nice little uh, um, dendrobium here because uh, she's such a cutie and uh, I'm glad you could join me today and thank you so much Ed and um, from me to you have a good evening and we'll speak again soon. Take care now. Bye bye.